with y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that run. I hope that you're safe, protected, and blessed. I pray that your relationship with the Most High is getting better, and I hope that you're moving towards a better direction day after day. Now, today's message I want to discuss about working hard for the kingdom of heaven, working hard for the Lord, and your work not being in vain, and always making sure that you stay diligent, stay alert, stay on top of everything. All right? You know, it's very important that we always just, you know, stay sharp and on point because in these times that we're in, it's getting more uncomfortable by the day. And it's like forcing people to get out their comfort zone. It's forcing people to do things they've never done before. It's forcing people into taking more risk than ever. And, of course, we have to definitely have faith and trust in the Lord along the way. But we also have to really just, you know, stay on point, stay sharp, because things are getting more uncomfortable by the minute. And we have to keep in our, our relationship with the most high point. We have to keep working for him until the end, until Christ comes back and returns, you know. Because you definitely want that crown. You definitely want that right rope, that white robes at the end. You feel me? All the work we do down here will reflect our afterlife, okay? And that spirit of laziness has to go. It has to flee. Uh, making excuses, um, being sluggish, that slumber spirit, that has to go, all right? God wants us to be diligent. He wants us to do things thoroughly. He always wants us just being on the go. He'll give us our rest and our peace when the time is needed. But as of now, we definitely have to keep working. You know, God, you know, made Adam work hard, you know, because that's because of the whole situation with Adam and Eve. And hard work is definitely installed in a man. You know, that's a man's, you know, makeup genetics is his hard work, his work ethic. You know what I'm saying? What he does with his hands. That's that's a reflection of a man. And we have to stop being so sinful in our nature and we have to be more productive. We have to create more and we have to build more. You get what I'm saying? God put us on earth to build and create, all right? And you do that through a lot of hard work, a lot of smart work, you know, a lot of details, a lot of preparation, a lot of discipline and things of that nature, you know, because we need to establish more things and we need to really build for the kingdom of heaven. You know, God always made all of his followers work hard. You know, Abraham worked hard to obtain that blessing and he had that faith as well. You know, Joseph worked hard while he was under bondage, you know, Daniel worked hard when he was an administrator and a politician and had a high status. He worked hard towards that. That wasn't an overnight thing. Daniel earned that. God promoted him. God gave him that favor and exalted Daniel. You get what I'm saying? And Christ and the disciples, they always worked really hard all the time. You know, they worked so hard that even the disciples would get tired. And Christ would be the only one still up praying and crying out to the Lord. <laughs> and Christ would always say, the son of man has, he doesn't have a place to let rest his head. He doesn't have a place to lay his head. Meaning that Christ was always working. He was always worshiping. He was always praising. He was always doing the works. He was always healing somebody. He was always on his feet. He was always on the go. Christ was very diligent, determined, and committed to following the Lord. And we have to be the same way with our lives as well. You feel me? So let's keep being hard workers, okay? So what I'm going to do is read some scriptures that talks about hard work and the importance of it, and just go from there, okay? So, so here we go. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 4. Poor is he who works with a negligent hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 11. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 24. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the slack hand will be put to forced labor. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 30. I pass by the field of the sluggard and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 4. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the diligent is made fat. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 27. A lazy man does not roast his prey, but the precious possession of a man is his diligence. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 4. The sluggard does not plow after the autumn, so he begs during the harvest and has nothing. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 9. He also who is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. Through indolence, 
the rafter sag and through slackness the house leaks. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6. Go to the ant, O sluggard, observe her ways and be wise. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 19. The way of the lazy is as hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a highway. The book of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 15. Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle man will suffer hunger. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. So that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23. In all labor there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 9. How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? The book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11. Concerning him we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. The book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 21. For the heavy drinker and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe, clothe, clothe one with rags. The book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 5. He who gathers in the summer is a son who acts wisely, but he who sleeps in the harvest is a son who acts shamefully. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. For even when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. The book of Second Thessalonians chapter three verse eleven. For we hear the same, we hear that some among you are leading an undisciplined life, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies. The book of Second Peter chapter three verse sixteen, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 48, verse 10. Cursed be the one who does the Lord's work negligently, and cursed be the one who restrains his sword from blood. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 15. The toil of a fool so wearies him that he does not even know how to go to a city. The book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 9. Let the labor be heavier on the men, and let them work at it so that they will pay no attention to false words. The book of Genesis, chapter 29, verse 17. And Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful of form and face. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 14. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 3. The one who guards his mouth preserves his life. The one who opens it wide comes to ruin. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 10. Whatever your, heart, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. Where the people go. All right. That dark place in the afterlife. Okay, so let's keep working hard. Let's stop being lazy. Let's be more productive and produce more. Okay, the most high, we have to start working for the most highest kingdom. How do you work for the most highest kingdom? Of course, it starts with yourself with just repentance and baptism and starting your life over. But now you got to get busy. Now you got to spread the gospel. You got to read the Bible. You got to spread the word of the most high. You got to win people to the kingdom of heaven. You got to heal people. You got to cast out demons. You got to do the works of the, of the disciples, do the works of God, do the works of Christ, do the works of the faith. All right. You got to keep praising the Lord. You got to keep influencing the word of God on people. You have to keep influencing the gospel on people. OK, you have to constantly keep working and working and working and building for the most high. All right. So let's be more active and stay on point. All right. Let's get let's do the father's business. Let's be active. All right. Let's get busy. Let's be more productive. Stop wasting time. All right, let's have active lifestyles, okay? Keep being diligent. Keep working hard. Keep working smart. The Lord's labor is not in vain, okay? Have better leadership, all right? Don't get caught up in pleasure and wasting time, all right? Let's keep serving the Lord. Let's keep having success. Let's keep working hard, 
Okay, let's keep being, let's keep just being on point, all right? So that's the message. So what I would love to do is give all the glory to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What I would also love to do is just close out with this and end it from there, okay? So here we go. He is the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The Apostle of our profession, the Arm of the Lord, the Atonement Sacrifice for our sins, the Author and Finisher of our faith, the Author and Perfecter of our faith, the Author of life, the Author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved Son, the blessed and only potent, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge, the judge, king eternal, the judge of Israel, king of Israel, king of kings and Lord of lords, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the life of the world, the line of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Ahai, Shai, Mahamashim, Barakatha, Shalawam, Shalom, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the revelation, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone to build is rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the truth, the way, the way, the truth, and life. The wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word of God, the word of life, the word. Amen. Hallelujah. All glory to the most high of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all praise to his son who died for our sins. So there you have it, people. That's that. Let's keep working for the kingdom of heaven. Let's keep being on point. Let's keep being strong and solid and firm. And let's keep pressing forward, okay? Keep fighting a good fight. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life over for the Most High. I pray that you repent, have a new life, you become more steadfast, you become more faithful and committed, and I pray that you stay more disciplined and have fun and enjoy your life as well and get through all your obstacles. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.